Hello everyone, this is Professor Jennifer LeMay and I'm just making this quick video to demonstrate how we code a real life inpatient medical record. So inpatient medical records, remember for patients that are admitted to the hospital as an inpatient, with that, the coding staff, typically inpatient coders, code the record and they assign ICD-10-CM for the diagnosis codes, ICD-10-PCS for the procedures. Remember, inpatient facility or inpatient hospital coders do not assign CPT codes for procedures. And then we calculate or compute the MSDRG. So in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to do that using 3M. There's other encoders that have the MSDRG capability, but again, for this video, we are using 3M. So to start with your inpatient record, you always have your face sheet, which just gives us our patient information. As a coder, we want to look and make sure that the documentation matches the EHR account that we're coding, right? But we also pay attention to our patient's gender and AIDS because that are um, things or those are things that we put in to our encoder as we're computing the MSDRG. So our patient is female, age 30. So next, I would just skim through the rest. The consent to admit. We don't do anything with that as a coder. You just want to make sure it's there. Advanced directive, same thing. We're not using that as a coder. Discharge summary. This is the meat and potatoes per se of an inpatient account. So my advice as a coder, my style is to read through the discharge summary first, then read through the other documentation and by documentation, we're talking physician or the clinical documentation, right? So then we're gonna look at the H&P, if there's an op report, progress notes, and then I then go back to the dis discharge summary a second time to make sure I have the whole story in my mind. The discharge summary is just that, a summary of the patient's stay at discharge. So when we're discharging the patient from our facility to home, to a nursing home, to home health, however we are discharging them, the summary tells the story of that patient's stay, what happened, why it happened, what was performed, the outcome, all those good things that we need as a coder. So our patient was admitted 426, discharged 430, so we have a four-day stay, right? Diagnosis on admission was fever of undetermined origin. Discharge diagnosis is acute pyelonephritis. Now remember, the admit diagnosis is just what the physician is thinking is going on as he or she admits that patient. It's just really a placeholder. The coding comes from our discharge diagnosis. Remember, the UHDDS guidelines we follow as an inpatient coder dictate what our discharge diagnosis is. And that UHDDS guideline states the principal diagnosis is what brought the patient to us after study, right? So our discharge diagnosis is acute pyelonephritis. Fever would just be a sign or symptom. Also remember the coding guideline about coding a sign or symptom. We don't code signs or symptoms when they're part of the disease process we are coding or that we have a diagnosis for. So our summary, we have a 30 year old white female who had a high fever off and on for several days prior to admission without any localizing signs or symptoms. Preliminary studies done as an outpatient were unremarkable except to indicate an infection. She was ultimately seen in the office with a high temp, was becoming dehydrated, washed out, weak, tired, and was admitted for further workup. So the workup included a chest x-ray that was normal, an IVP or intravenous pilogram that was normal, blood culture normal, urine culture grew out, Escheria coli or E. coli greater than 100,000 colonies, throat culture was normal, one blood culture did finally grow out alpha strep. I talked to Dr. Burke about this and we decided on the basis of her clinical condition and the fact that this did not grow out on all bottles, it was more likely a contaminant. Then it goes through all the urine and the lab. I'm not gonna read all of those to you. The next paragraph, 
Our patient was started on IV fluids, IV Keflex. Her temperature remained elevated for approximately 48 hours. Now it's been normal for the last 48 to 72. She feels better. Her hydration is better. She's eating, no urinary symptoms. She's being discharged at this time on her antibiotic, 500 milligrams four times a day. She needs to increase fluid intake and we'll follow up in one week. So pretty cut and dry. So let's look at the next report. So h and so the h and is what the physician knows upon admission, right before they've ordered all the tests, before they've done workup. So our admitting diagnosis is the same as what we saw on the discharge summary. So the admit diagnosis is that fever, undetermined etiology, pyelonephritis, dehydration, and possible urinary tract infection. Then our chief complaint is the chills and fever and just feeling lousy, the HPI, or history of present illness. Our patient began to run a temp on Sunday, no other complaints. She's felt like not eating for five days, only taking fluid and aspirin. She was in, seen in the office on 424 with a temp, but just taking aspirin. At the time, physical exam was negative, her white count, was 18,300, the next day was 13,400, and the temperature was elevated to 102 to 103. Unless she was taken aspirin, she was seen in the office again today, still feeling lousy, with some pain in her left upper flank. She's being admitted to the hospital for workup. So that tells us everything about how the patient came to be admitted, right? Family history is negative. Sorry, way too fast. Um, past history, she's been admitted for delivery of two children. Otherwise, she's in excellent health. She smokes 15 to 20 cig cigarettes a day and has done so for the last 15 years. She doesn't drink. She doesn't use drugs. She lives at home with her husband and children. Review of systems is normal. You don't have to go through all the examination as an inpatient coder. You can just glance over this. So you just glance over the review of systems, general skin, HEENT test. If there's something abnormal that the physician has not documented, you could query the significance, but typically anything that's a finding, the physician will comment on. So moving on to the progress notes. Again, these are the physician's notes of how the patient is doing during the hospitalization. So every day, how the patient is, is progressing. So 427, chief complaint is the left flank pain fever. The diagnosis is the pyelonephritis, dehydration, and rule out renal calculus. The plan is to admit the patient, hydrate with fluids and antibiotic. Then the next day, the alpha strep in the blood culture. Clinically, the patient is improving, has a genital urinary infection or a urinary tract infection. Then the next day, 429, patient feels better, still complaining of left flank and back pain. Again, you don't have to go through all the exam. And then we're going to scroll down to where it says assessment and plan probable left pyelonephritis, rule out stone, positive streptococcal bacteremia, possibly secondary to pyelonephritis, possible other source abscess gout. So as you're reading this, you can see the physician clinically thinking through all the options for this patient, right? They're trying to determine what's going on with the patient, how to treat it. That's what the benefit of reading these notes are. The IVP was fine. Then the orders, this is just all the testing, all the medications, anything the doctor's ordering. Again, just glance over these as an inpatient coder. Okay, then it has the order to discharge the patient home. Laboratory data, remember you're a coder, we are not clinicians, we cannot diagnose. You can look at the labs to reference uh, diagnosis you might have seen documented, or if there's anything questionable, we would query the physician, but we cannot pick up a diagnosis from a lab. So again, you scan over the labs, but you can't code from the labs. 
So scan over those. We can see the blood culture was ordered. There's the strep that they talked about in the discharge summary. The blood culture again with no bacteria or growth at 24 hours. More labs. The E. coli that again was mentioned. So again, you just scan over these. Here's the IVP. It says it's essentially normal, which again was documented in that discharge summary. The EKG, sinus rhythm normal, and there's the actual tracings, the graphics. So all the rest of the chart is just the nursing documentation, med record. We don't code off any of this. Again, you can glance over it as an inpatient coder, but we cannot pull a diagnosis from anything other than the physician or clinical provider's documentation, right? So let's go back to the discharge summary. And like I said at the beginning, my style is to go through, read the whole thing, and then come back and reread the discharge summary a second time. So again, our patient came in with a fever. Discharge diagnosis is that acute pyelonephritis. Uh, our patient was dehydrated, right? They ordered IV hydration and IV antibiotics to treat both of those. So we coded, the, or we're going to code the dehydration because we treated it, right? The rule out things we saw in the H&P and along in the progress reports, we're not coding anything that we didn't treat that was ruled out by the time we got to discharge. Right, those working diagnoses are not coded unless the physician specifies the significance of them during our discharge summary. So again, we're not gonna code urine culture or any kind of bacteria because they think it was a contaminant. Okay. So I'm going to bring up my 3M. So our patient was female. She was 30. And she had a three-day stay. So I'm just going to change my date to make it a three-day stay. Okay. Then on the product finder for inpatient coding, remember we always pick this DRG finder. So I'm going to hit DRG finder, then I'm going to hit continue. The patient disposition, that's where the patient was discharged. So when the patient left our facility, where did the patient go? Our patient went home. So we're going to pick number one, home or self-care. Admit diagnosis, that again is the fever, right? What brought the patient into us? was just the fever, so we're gonna do that. We don't know what kind of fever, I'm gonna pick I. So now I'm gonna go, let me move my screen over. So on the left-hand side of 3M, we're gonna hit this add diagnosis, okay? And when we do this add diagnosis, then it changes to principal diagnosis. The screen before was admit. So make sure and pay attention to that. Admit, again, it's just a placeholder. It is not a final diagnosis. It's not used for reimbursement. It's not used to calculate that MSDRG. So make sure you put in the admit diagnosis, again, as a placeholder. But what, when we start coding, we code the principal diagnosis. So the principal diagnosis, or what brought the patient to us after study, right, the keyword after study, was that pyelonephritis. So type pyelonephritis, if I can spell correctly. So number one, pyelonephritis, and it was acute. So we don't want to code a bacteria or virus because we don't know that either was present. So we do not wish to code, number one. Nope, we did not have kidney calculus, so we're going to hit no. Okay, so there's our first diagnosis. And now I'm going to hit the add diagnosis again 
on the right side of the screen and we're gonna do our dehydration. So dehydration, other, our patient was not a newborn or wasn't post-traumatic or post-procedural. She did not have confusion, interference, hypotension, none of that. So we're gonna hit one. We don't have to code anything else with it. So we're gonna hit one. And then our patient was also a smoker, right? So we wanna pick that up. I'm gonna hit add diagnosis, smoker. So we're gonna hit number one, smoker. And then number four, and it was cigarettes. So we're gonna hit number two. Um, uncomplicated because we didn't get a disorder or in remission with it. So we're gonna hit number three. No more to code. So the smoking was it. So I'm gonna hit one, no toxic effects. So two. Okay, so there's my code. So I'm gonna hit continue. Move my screen over so you can see. Okay, so here comes our patient summary is all right here. So our admit diagnosis, again, we don't report that for coding, it's just a placeholder, is that R50.9. But our discharge diagnosis is N10. Our second diagnosis is E86.0. And then our third diagnosis is F17.210. Remember 3M does not include the decimal point, but as a coder, we're always putting that in. It's our job to know that decimal point belongs in CM codes. It doesn't belong in PCS or CBT. So it's important to include that to designate the difference between your CM code and other codes. And then our MSDRG is right here at 690. So again, our codes are N10, E86.0, F17.210, and our MSDRG is 690.